and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we'll be covering avoiding surprises with your policy. I'll give a brief introduction about Griffin Underwriting Services. We'll cover binding a policy, a policy timeline, premium and payments, financing, AIs or additional insurers, renewals and cancellations, refunds, midterm changes, audits, transportation tips, cross-selling tips. And then at the end of each tutorial, there is a list of contacts should you need to reach out to us with any further uh, questions or help. So as I said, we'll be covering a few items we should be aware of uh, that can impact the insurance policy. Um, this can affect your book of business as an agent. Uh, they can have a financial impact on both you and your insured. And then by keeping a few of these items in mind, uh, you're also able, able to offer your customers excellent customer service and grow that book of business that you have in the ENS marketplace. So let's get started. When we're talking about the binding process, it's important to remember each of our quotes have a checklist for you to review and follow along. On the right side of your screen, you'll see an example. Not all checklists will look like this, but there is a checklist provided. If you have any questions, please reach out to your underwriter and ask questions. But on this checklist, it'll tell you exactly what we need in order to bind this policy. The example I give, we need the fully completed and signed application. We need um, a page of the quote, page one of the quote signed by the insured with the proposed effective date. We do need payment. It is important to understand in order to bind any policy, we need payment. Uh, and then any additional supplemental or RFR forms, these will be included in the quote. If they are included, that means we need them completed, signed, and sent back. And a lot of times a diligent search letter is also required by each state. We need those uh, completed and sent back. Once you have all the items completed, you're going to scan those in. You can email them back to your underwriter. You can send them to submissions at gogust.com. Um, but we need the completed paperwork as well as payment in order to bind any policy. When we're talking about a timeline for a policy, they're sent directly to the agent, typically within 30 to 60 days from inception. Please keep in mind, we do not have direct contact with the insured, so the insured does not get a copy of their policy from Griffin Underwriting. You, the agent, need to provide a copy to your insured. Uh, sometimes there is limited exceptions, um, but uh, for the most part, we will be emailing the policy directly to the agent. Um, we are trying to go 100% paperless, so uh, check, in, check your email box for those policies. If you don't get it, reach out to your underwriter. When we're talking about premiums and payment, as I said earlier, in order to bind any uh, or renew any policy, we must receive payment. Uh, information on how to make a payment is included in the checklist for binding uh, or the checklist for renewal. Uh, typically, it's right underneath that checklist. It'll give you the options on how to make a payment. Uh, the insured or you can mail us a physical check to our PO box. Uh, online payments can be made two ways, either via an e-check or with a credit card. There are fees associated with both credit card payments as well as e-checks. Uh, typically with a credit card, it's 3.2% of the pure premium. With an e-check, it's a flat rate of $2.50. We do not take any payments for any reason over the phone. So the three options are mailing in a physical check, making an online payment via credit card, or via e-check. <coughs> If a policy uh, is eligible for financing, we do offer financing through IFC, which is the Insurance Financial Corporation. Uh, the annual percentage rate is 20%. It's typically less for amounts financed over $5,000. The policy must have a pure premium of $750 or more in order to qualify for financing. So that is our qualifier. <laughs> Excuse me. The down payment required if an uh, insured is deciding to finance is 27.5% of the pure premium plus all taxes and fees. Uh, if a policy is more than 25% min minimum earned, then the down payment requirement must be adjusted. So a quick example, if the policy is 50% er fully earned, then the down payment must be a minimum of 52 plus 100% of the taxes and fees. If you have questions about this, please don't hesitate to ask your underwriter. <laughs> Annual policies, 12-month policies, uh, IFC offers nine monthly installments after the down payment. 
For shorter term policies, typically six to nine months, as few as four installments can be offered, but it's specific to the policy. For six month policies, qualifying policies can be financed with a down payment of 40% plus all those taxes and fees. And financing is not available <laughs> for policies less than six months or policies that are fully earned. So again, we'll, we'll state that in the quote, but if you have any questions, check with your underwriter. If a payment is being made with a check, a copy of the check is sufficient to start the binding process, but we need the actual check to complete binding and issue the policy. So a lot of uh, insurers like to pay with just a paper check, make a copy of that paper check, include it with your binding documents, send it back to the underwriter, and just communicate that that physical check is going to be dropped in the mail and send it over to us. <coughs> When we're talking about additional insureds, otherwise known as AIs, unless written approval has been given to your agency by Griffin Underwriting, all certs must be issued by Griffin Underwriting. Uh, Gus can only issue certificates for policies that we write, and all cert requests must be made in writing. There's a couple of ways that you can make that request. You can send an email to submissions at gogus.com. You can also make the request via our website, gogus.com. Up at the top, you're gonna to click Policy Services. It's a drop-down menu, and then you'll, you'll select Request a Certificate. Uh, please always indicate the insurable interest, which is the relationship between the insured and the certificate holder. Uh, our underwriters need this information in order to determine the correct endorsement form as well as pricing. If special wording or endorsements are required, please provide that information at the time of your request. The cost for different AIs is dependent on the type of risk and the AI's interest. So our underwriter will communicate to you what that uh, cost is. All AIs are 100% earned, so make sure you read your paperwork carefully. We hate to have surprises. Read through everything. <laughs> Each AI must be charged for and issued separately unless a blanket is already in force, and AIs cannot be swapped out for the same premium. Uh, it, has to, it has to be all independent. Quick example for a down payment for AI charges. You have a policy premium of $10,000, additional insured premium of $13,000. So the total premium is $13,000. You've got that $3,000 difference. There's a policy fee of $500 and taxes and fees are $283.50. So you're gonna take the down payment, which would be 27.5% of that 10,000, the pure premium, um, plus the $3,000 for the AI premium then you're gonna add the policy fee as well as all the taxes. So uh, an insured's down payment for this specific example would be $6,533.50. When we're talking about renewals, it is very important to remember, renewals are not automatic in surplus lines uh, policies. Uh, we need documentation at the end of each policy term in order to continue with the policy. So anywhere between 30 and 60 days prior to the policy expiration, your underwriter will be either sending you a request for additional documents uh, or a renewal quote. Once we get the information back from you, the agent, with all the signed documentation, we can either provide that quote or provide, um, uh, excuse me, we can either provide a quote and then in order to bind, same process as when you originally um, bound the policy. We need the list of documents that is given, the checklist for binding, as well as payment. So it looks pretty much identical to writing new business. <coughs> if new information is needed, uh, the renewal offer will be sent 30 days prior to the policy expiration date. And again, in order to bind um, without a lapse in coverage, we need all of the documentation as well as payment on or before the expiration date. So really important that uh, you understand this is a timely process. If we do not receive payment and the binding document, documents, the coverage will expire. One or the other does not suffice to bind. We need both. The carriers do require it. Just like I said uh, earlier, um, you'll see a checklist for binding for renewal. You'll also see those payment instructions. I can't stress this enough, renewals are not <clears throat> automatic and payment is required in order to continue with coverage. <clears throat> if there's
there's a policy that you need to cancel, we do need the Accord 35. Um, this is an example of it on the right hand side of your screen. It's a cancellation request form. You're going to email all requests to info at gogust.com. They will be processed by our accounting department. Refunds and backdating. Uh, refunds for commission are issued monthly and they are based off of the account statements. All refunds are typically processed within 30 business days. When we're talking about backdating, there is a very, very limited opportunity to backdate any policy. If backdating is an option, it is dependent on the carrier, the situation, and with appropriate documentation. We here at Griffin Underwriting, we don't get to make that call. It is all up to the carrier. There is zero, no backdating with any transportation policy and we do not have the authority to approve backdating policies. Again, the carrier makes all of those decisions and we cannot make any exceptions. Um, again, if there is an option for backdating, we need proper documentation, uh, an explanation of the situation, and approval from the carrier. <laughs> if there needs to be changes made in term to any policy, uh, please note that there may be a premium charge for said changes. It just is really dependent on the change. Uh, changes in location or operations may affect eligibility for coverage as well. So when we're talking about location, if the current carrier, uh, they may have availability in a certain state or geographical area, but if the insured moves outside of those available areas, areas the carrier um, may not be able to continue with coverage. Uh, <laughs> Changes can be made, we just need to know the details. Same thing with operations. The insur if the insurer decides to take on a type of work that is not uh, contemplated for and excludes with current, current policy standards or current policy <coughs> parameters. So changes can be made, just know that there might be a premium charge and we might have to change carriers. It is always imperative to keep your underwriters apprised of any changes so we can counsel the agent properly have those conversations with your insurance. It is okay to have changes made. It is important because we want to make sure they have the coverage. Just know that it could affect the premium and or the policy. If an insured has more than one policy written through Griffin Underwriting and changes need to be made, there needs to be a request for each individual policy. Please don't assume that if you request a change to be made on one policy, that will reflect all of the policies written. When we're talking about audits, <laughs> here's a couple of quick questions that we hear often. Who orders the audit? So for all carriers, aside from the Lloyds of London programs that we have, uh, the carriers order their own audits. We get notification only from a non-productive audit or for an audit premium endorsement. All policies are subject to audits um, and the carrier can order an audit on any policy. Who pays for the audit? Griffin Underwriting is required to bill and collect any additional premium that results from any audits. However, if payment is not received by the indicated due date, the premium will revert back to the carrier for collection from the insured. Um, know that the, if this happens, this can affect coverage for any current policy term. So then what happens if the insured does not comply or pay for the audit? If the previous policy term has resulted in a premium audit endorsement, the current term may result in an endorsement matching the audit endorsement exposure. If non-productive, the current policy may be subject to non-renewal. So just know that, you know, have that conversation with your insured. Uh, it is very important for them to comply with uh, said audit and to make sure that the audit charge is paid. It can affect their coverage. <coughs> Specific to transportation policies, um, I, I put this specifically in here because this is something that gets missed or uh, is not really well known quite often. Accurate information is absolutely imperative with transportation policies, let alone all policies. Uh, the need for accurate driver information and details is imperative. Uh, any changes can and will impact the premium, both at quoting and at any time during the policy term. An accurate employee count, uh, this is specific to garage policies. We need to know about all the employees, not just the owners and the drivers. Uh, if you have a bookkeeper, if you have a clerical staff, um, mechanics, etc., we need to know about the entire employee count. Midterm changes. 
uh, changing the name or entity, it will always result in a cancel and rewrite of the policy. That's just, it's a requirement by the, each carrier. The garage location will result in a change in premium. Radius change will result in a change in premium. And the agent cannot, uh, an agent change cannot happen midterm. Uh, the only exception for this is if a book of business has been sold or the, the uh, originating agent has lost their license, but agents cannot be changed midterm for transportation policies. Filings. The agent must provide complete and accurate information for all filings. Uh, notice for canceling policies needs to be made at least 35 days in advance. So for instance, if an insured has a truck with a filing that was sold, we would need a copy of the bill or sale or lease uh, termination showing that there's no insurable interest in order to be considered having it removed from the policy. But no, we need at least 35 days in advance. When it comes to cross-selling, you as the agent, uh, it's a great way to show your customers not only that you have their best interests in mind, um, but you want to make sure that they have full coverage with with all the scope of, of both their personal and business exposure. We have all sorts of products that we can help you with uh, to make sure the business doesn't walk out your door and that you as the agent are servicing your insurance well. Uh, we definitely pride ourselves in keeping up with the current market trends. Um, we want to make sure that you're getting the best possible products at the best possible premium pricing. So whether you're looking for specific products that you cannot write in-house or you're trying to expand your current book by venturing into the ENS world, please remember we have something you need. We would love the opportunity to work with you. Uh, we enjoy our agents so much. Uh, we would love to help you in any way we can. So please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. We welcome the, the opportunity to help you. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. For those Allstate agents, you can email CSR at gogus.com or give us a call at 844-859-1766. For those non-Allstate agents, you can email info at gogus.com or call us at 800-562-8095. If you already have a relationship with an underwriter, feel free to reach out to them as well. They're happy to help. Again, my name is Carly Rahm. I'm the marketing representative for Griffin Underwriting. We want to say thank you again for uh, taking the time to listen to this. We appreciate working with you. We thank you, and we, have, we hope you have a wonderful day.